Hip-hop is strengthened by its respect to region. New artists from the pockets of Chicago, Detroit, to its birthplace of NYC are redefining their city by creating movements with the potential to take over the airwaves and billboard charts. The current wave of Atlanta artists are captivating a young and restless digital generation. Join me as I dig deeper into Atlanta's new rap scene and spend a day with the voices behind the movement. This is My City, Atlanta. The buzz is kind of growing in Atlanta for some of these new rappers. We're headed to Father's apartment. Father is an Atlanta rapper, a part of Awful Records. And they're recording a couple songs, him, Key, and McConan, who, as some of you guys know, just got signed to Drake's OBO sound. Howdy. It's been roughly about three years now, but it began as Awful Media Group. It's more so like filming, video, graphic okay. design. Then about maybe a year ago, really, that's when the Awful Records thing started getting driven. Do you later want to be like with a major label? If you ask me, I'd be like independent all the way. Why is that? Because you don't need a major label in 2014. As long as I keep the keep my creative freedoms and ownership of what I made. How we have it now, social media and shit, we're kids of that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We marketing and all that, we make what's cool. It's the labels digital. want us for that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We can cultivate ourselves and make money off of that mm -hmm. and never have to give them a dollar. It's and all about sign. like Creating, putting out, and touring. Right. Nothing else. And that's but, really where the money is to begin with. Right. Yeah. Touring. How did you meet Key and Makona? Yeah, Key been the man in the, the city, man bro. Been in the city for quite some time. Makona's on the internet one day, like, this is the time. If you want me to remix one of your songs or add a verse, send it to me right now. I'll have it. You only got an hour. This is what it is. Fat says, fuck it. I'm gonna send him no yeah. cash. Nokia, huh? Nokia. He pulls up on, on us that day and is like, bruh, y'all are just doing y'all. Like, this nigga 6'4, he got dressed, this nigga's weird as hell, it's a gay guy over there. Like, y'all take people for what they are. And I appreciate that. Like, and musically, I've been checking out y'all music. I'm gonna tell everybody who'll listen, awful records is that way. I mean, McCombin show up whenever he wants to. He's late right now. He needs to be here so we can get to work. Make another hit. Man, Sam McCombin, fat ass to her to fuck up, man. I always want to be late, man. I like a diesel, man. Um, currently, I am looking through my past two years of production for us a nice little jam for Key Eye and McConan. <laughs> Hey! Yo, 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 turn the beat up. Oh. I'm outside, I'm outside, I'm I said I'm outside. Okay, I'm okay, I said I said I'm outside. That's it. You can play that mm -hmm. one. All right, turn it, turn it back from the top of me. Hey, hey, I'm outside. I drink Stella. I'm outside. My next flight out to Belgium. I'm outside. My phone be going ham. That shit be buzzing all day. Like I, damn. Still doing my thing. I'll probably do another free mixtape or something just yeah. to have some content out. And that was all like your decision? Yeah, this me and OVO, they're yeah. cool with it. That's just what I love to do. I love to create and make music. So I've been doing vocals myself since about eight years ago. Well, I was writing for my mom and shit back in like 04. Who'd you write for your mom? Just songs, you know what I'm saying? Like I was, I just did the keyboards, right? I wasn't confident enough in singing in my voice and stuff, so I would help her write stuff and I'd be like, you know, these lyrics can you sing them like this. And really? Yeah, that's really why, how I started doing music yeah. through my mom. You know what I'm saying? Uh, nobody flipping packs now. I just did three in a row. Them shows is back to back to back now. 
So now we're headed to the Blue House where OG Mako and the OGG crew chill at and also throw surprise parties, which from what I hear are known to close down the entire block. But what sets Mako apart from the rest of the artists is his intensity, which you could actually hear in his hit, You Guessed It. Hey! I'm from the south side of Old Man, 4900 block. And I mean, that's where like, hella gangs and hella shit came from. I'm everybody angry. And nobody got to be mad no more because I'm mad all the time. So everybody get to be nice and calm and shit. You know what I'm saying? And father get to make this chill ass music. And Rory get to make this super enlightened ass music. You know what I'm saying? And me, I'm I'm here because I've been through all the shit that a lot of people wouldn't have to go through. I get to I get a lot of them to be able to let out the shit that they too afraid to say. I just say it. Fuck nigga on site. How'd the song come about? I was just drunk and pissed off. Bitch, you guessed it. I'm gonna show you some shit though. On July 23rd, 2012, OG Mecca's best friend, Splurge, was killed in cold blood. I, gotta, I, gotta, I was I right up there on. and I looked down. And I said, damn, nobody's on the block. I'm about to go home. And I made a right and got on the train and looked on Instagram and this nigga was dead. Period. You saw it on Instagram? Yeah, my car yeah, was, it was a video and shit, all that shit. Somebody had shot from right there too. It was and I, it was I was right there at the end of this block right here. I looked up and he was right here. He was right, he was right here laid out, like still kind of shaking and shit. And then they put the, they put the seat on him. It was right here though. Yeah, right there. You get tired of that shit. So what was like the first thing you did to kind of change that around? I stopped fucking with everybody. Um, I moved. I left. I got tired of looking at the block. I got tired of walking this shit. It's the same niggas though. That's the same undercover car. I've been here three or four years. Same <laughs> cop. You know what I'm saying? So you know, I don't give a fuck about pointing at him. It's the same shit. You don't change. Now, how long are you gonna look at the same J? What's OGG? Tell um, people what that it's means. Like, I mean, it means originality yeah. against Britney's, but like, really, it's like a lifestyle. It's like, it's a crew, it's a fam, it's everything. It's an actual company too, though. It's Atlanta, everybody came together. We was the first people to bring people together like this. The flower child of the group, Rory just signed with Columbia Records off of one song, God's Whisper. He brings a hippie style to the rap scene. It's gone. Definitely want to talk to any restaurants in Atlanta. <laughs> I follow 24, it's open 24 hours, man. Right? It's like the most authentic, like, you know, Vietnamese pho, noodles, ramen, whatever you want to call it. Everybody at this table is very opinionated, but one thing we never doubt is that he's an artist. He knows, he knows, he has a vision. He knows what he wants to hear. Okay, like for example, like, like the anti-tour. So the concept is, we get this, this U-Haul truck, and uh, we put the entire band inside of the truck. Then we have like a generator to power it all. And then like we pull up to like other artists' shows and we perform outside as like as the, the crowd leaves. Rory jumps on top of the truck and like, just starts going off. You have 300 kids that never seen you before, just seen you do some wild shit that they've never seen done before, and then they're tweeting about it and they just want more. I was reading the tweets and there was like, yo, I heard this kid named Rory was driving down on a highway on top of a truck. He just starts turning into like this crazy as like urban legend. Got this feeling going higher. I just get like a lot of comparisons. Like I hear like Pink Floyd, I hear I hear Prince, I hear Jack White, I hear Freddie Mercury, all kinds of different other things. All the comparisons are great and they you know really motivated. I got this feeling going higher. at the barrio, which is kind of a spot where Father, Key, Wakonan, a lot of the guys met there or like still work there. So it's a very important spot for a lot of people. Welcome to Atlanta, baby. Atlanta. You never been to Atlanta. New Atlanta. Hey. Welcome to New Atlanta. New Atlanta. Hey. Phantoms on top of Phantoms. Get that New Atlanta, baby. Hello, Montana. Boot up in Atlanta. Boot up. New Atlanta. Hey. With only security. Walking around with that help. Oh. Bring up the cameras. Oh. Cameras. Oh. Cam camera, man. Porno oh. moving. It's, back. Back. it's definitely back. There's an energy here. There's definitely an energy here. We all here right now together. We all don't necessarily make the same type of music, but shit, we all know about each other and we all respect each other's craft. Everybody that is is like this, you know what I'm saying, before the music. A big family with that unity, we can all be so much powerful opposed to being solo or being alone. Atlanta has an eccentric hip-hop legacy, but it's arguably never seen a wave of artists that runs this deep and is as youthful and diverse in style and sound as what many are calling the new Atlanta. 
What sets them apart is actually what brings them together, individuality. The collective's charisma, confidence, and their DIY creative process is what encourages and connects with many. All right, you can call it Atlanta Renaissance, New Atlanta. At the end of the day, this is real Atlanta. You walk with a billboard. Yeah. Yeah.